Hello YouTube, it's Zeus Gaming here and I am finally back. Yes, I've been away for a very long time and have not been on YouTube, been recording, been doing much like that, but I am finally back. And today we are back with a Clash of Kings mod for Mount Blade Warband. Um, if you guys haven't seen my previous playthrough on this, then a Clash of Kings mod is just a Game of Thrones mod for Mount Blade Warband. Um, Real quick, I'm going to do this. Turn the music off, because that's going to be an issue, because copyright strikes. Yay! Um, so, this is a series that is actually, I believe, the longest series I ever did on my channel, and it is one of my personal favorites. Um, I play Mount Blade a ton. It's it's one of my favorite games. Um and I have numerous different mods that I've played for and things like that. And the Clash of Kings mod, in my opinion, is just one of the best. It brings so much to the game and it has so much in it. Um, it's got quests, it's got secret locations, it's got hidden like items throughout the map, it's got all sorts. Um, and it's one that I really enjoy and I really like playing and I... I've played Mountain Blade, you know, tons and tons and tons, but this has probably been my favorite one, and at least for making a, you know, a series on, probably one of the most entertaining. Um, so we're starting off in character creation, because, you know, that's always fun. So we're just going to do the basic kind of what it starts with, um, because numerous reasons. Um, so we start with the 10 strength, which is huge, um, especially for early game and things like that, getting into fights and stuff like that. The 10 strength is big. Um, and also it allows us to be a noble, which will help us out with things down the line, numerous different types of things. Um, we are going to tick the gather companions, which just brings all the companions in the town you start with, which in my opinion, it's just, it's a hassle having to go find every single one of them. And I just prefer them being right there for numerous different reasons. Um, and we're going to name our character the wolf I should capitalize that um the wolf um for a few reasons because my favorite family in uh westeros and game of thrones and all that is the starks by far and me just being you know the wonderful creative person i am not gonna name it anything else so we're just naming it the wolf and we're going to increase i think we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna put it we're going to put three in a strength and an extra one into intelligence. Um, the three to strength so I can up these skills a little more. And the one into intelligence to give us that extra skill point, which we're going to put into trade. Um, trade being something that's going to help us get more money down the line. And we're just going to put all of it into our one-handed weapons. And just simple character creation. So give our guy... Beard, nice, nice big beard, and long hair. Cause why not? None of that really matters. Cause you put a helmet on and it's all gone. Um, so I'm gonna be trying to record this daily to every other day, and so it's it's hopefully gonna be on my channel every day, if not every other day, um, depending on how I can record and how I can upload and stuff like that. Um, just gotta wait for this to. Load in to start our traditional mugging. Lovely way to always. Mount Blade always has the same start to it, and oh, yep, I'm gonna probably die pretty fast here. The guy's got a hammer, which does a ton of damage. Yeah, that extra point into Power Strike really helps because hits like that, the zero damage, happen a lot like more frequently. And defeating this guy actually becomes a challenge. Yes! Those fights are always really annoying, and yeah, and then we gotta deal with the typical this guy coming up, and I'm, for most of this dialogue, I'm just going to skip through it, because I've seen it numerous times, and 
it's not hugely important. So if you guys want to see it, then just you can pause the video and read through it. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Now to orient the map because the map's upside down. Yeah. And head back into Weeping Town. Go, we're going to go to the tavern and we're going to pick up some of the companions that you can get for free and stuff because they're just useful to have and a good way to get some companions without having to worry about going around and recruiting people. So again, I'm just going to click through a lot of this. If you want to actually read it, then feel free to pause and read it that way. Just going to quickly get through a lot of this. Um, and there's a few places that we got to go because there's the early quest that we get given and then there's some quests that I personally want to, well not quests, but um, places I personally want to go and some things I want to pick up. Because um, I've played this a lot between, you know, any of my, like my last series and stuff like that, and I've learned a lot more of the ins and outs of it. Um, and certain things that you can find, which you kind of got to know. I mean, okay, if you're one of those people you love to go and explore and things like that, then, you know, that's always right there and things like that but um there's certain things that like you you got to kind of know um to really know to go look for these things because they're actually really important um and they've added here, let's go with this. so there's a new quest in your starting like list of quests one of these being this beyond the wall you go with the night's watch um if you guys have seen the series then at the point when lord commander mormont leads basically an expedition beyond the wall and stuff like that, you actually can join this and be a part of this. Um, however, it does bring certain other events in the world to light, or basically just they come through. Um, I believe there's one or two more people that we have to pick up. Um, should just be uh, Fena, I believe, and... Um, Fenna and Carver. Fenna and Carver are the last two people we have to pick up. This is basically just going to be going in and out of the tavern a few times. There's Fenna. Carver's one that I really want to pick up because he's... If you if you guys have never seen Carver in this playthrough, or like you never played, like played yourself or know who he is, Carver is a companion who, in my opinion, just brings a certain sense of just humor basically to the group um i'll show you when we find him and have his little introductory dialogue there he is you know you can you can see his giant meat cleaver right there and his name's carver and here's his dialogue because carver totally doesn't sound like a lunatic murderer um <laughs> and you literally ask him what are you the dialogue with carver is just in my opinion, it's it's really, really entertaining and really funny. Um, but yeah, Carver is basically just a lunatic murderer. If you guys haven't really picked that up, um, I could probably sell this cloth. Or actually, wait, fifteen and ten, fifty. Yeah, same as mine. I'm just gonna sell it. See if there's any kind of like quick stuff we could pick up, just like a shield. Maybe you could pick up this, but no. Is there even like a... Dang it. I want to say there was like javelins or something. Ranged weapons are really, really useful. Um, in fact, blunt weapons are really useful, but I'm not going to pick that up for right now. Um, ranged weapons are particularly very useful because you can get certain situations where you just... You want some... Why am I going back? you kind of want some sort of ranged weapon. Um, especially if you hit like a river or something like that. We're going to talk to the guild master real quick because that's always a good source of experience if I remember correctly. It's going to take a second to load. Um, so yeah, I currently don't have a ton of plans as for 
if I'm going to join a specific faction or if I'm going to go do certain things. And there's 300 experience, and that's about all we're going to do for now. Um, I don't really have many plans to go join a faction. Um, let me introduce you real quick, too. If you guys don't know the Game of Thrones world and things like that, let me introduce you. So you have Dorne down here. Um, then you have the Reach right here that stretches all throughout here. You've got the Stormlands. You've got the Westerlands, which, in my opinion, I believe are like the strongest faction in the game. Um, you have Dragonstone over here. Then you've got the Riverlands, the Vale, the Three Sisters. Um, then you have the North. You've got the Iron Islands and a new one that they've added into this game. You actually have the Night's Watch as a faction, as their own thing. Um, if you guys don't know the Game of Thrones lore, I can I'm gonna kind of go through and explain as we go through and like play this, or you guys can feel free to look it up on your own. Um, but we start in Stormlands. Um, the Weeping Town is like the Stormlands' only big like town, really. Most of the rest of these are castles or things like that. Um, but we are going to start kind of just give a little plan real quick. So we're starting to go to Howling Hill to pick something up over to Karen Hall, then back to the Weeping Town to kind of finish the quest and start another quest. And then we're headed up to King's Landing, which is the like capital of Westeros. Um, and then we've got Essos over here, but I may not pay a ton of attention to Essos um, throughout this playthrough. So we're going to head... Oh, banner. Banner selection. We're going to just simplistic do the Starks, because... As I've already explained, these Starks are my favorite faction in this entire world. Um, like the world of Westeros and Game of Thrones and all that. Um, and so let me explain this. This place is, you can find these all throughout the map. They're just little like places to explore to get experience. So for example, if I walk up to like this rock over here. I get an automatic 200 experience just for doing that. So these places are really good for experience um, and leveling up. And then there's things like this. These little chests, which you can find in most of these places, if not all, and they contain things. Like this contains a rusty two-handed axe, which I can't use currently, and a weirwood branch. The weirwood branch is really good to sell. Um, so yeah, they're useful. Okay, so now that we've acquired that, we're going to head over to Karen Hall to do the real quick one of the initial quests that we're given. We've got this just is um oh wait that no that I actually need to go back and do. Um it's just kind of the quiz the um, quest lines quest map. I can English. Um and then we've got this to go deal with a white in Karen Hall, which as you'll see is not necessarily the truth. Gonna speed this up a little bit, make it a little framey. Okay. Karen Hall is somewhere that I believe doesn't have a separate like chest to it. I believe it's just this for the quest. So we're just going to take our horse, run past this very lovely hanged man, who for some reason has a talk dial or like a yeah, for some reason it has a talk action to it, but it, yep, let's just go talk to a random dead body. Um, yeah, we just gotta head up here. As you can see, lots of just creepy skeletons and stuff like that, and skulls, and random man standing in a hole in the middle of a giant stone circle, because why not? Again, feel free if you guys want to pause and actually see what the dialogue is. Go for it. I... Personally, just I've done it enough times. Don't really need to go back through and read. And now, just to head back to the Weeping Town, and hopefully not get bandits because bandits are a pain. Oh, uh, actually, real quick, we should level up. We're gonna throw. Yeah, we're gonna throw in our two into strength so we can get our Iron Flesh and Power Strike up again, and then we're just gonna throw it in more into one hand. Just again, it, it helps for if you get into fights or things like that. Because um, especially early game until you have 
like a retinue of people getting into fights is an issue with bandits because you'll find them everywhere and they do become a very big issue if you don't know what you're doing so we've got two people i believe yep just these two right here Accepting Garibald. Oh, wait, no, we have to go talk to the guy. In, never mind. We have to go talk to the guy in the tavern. Talk to him. And again, just if you guys want, then read through it, but I'm not going to. Um, then back to the tavern. Um, yep. Goodman Tom. Um, and you just get paid for that and experience for people in your party. Okay. Um, gonna go to the market. Oh, wait, no. Go back. Now we have 504 coins, and we've got the Weirwood branch we can sell. We also have this axe which we could sell, which two-handed axe would be useful, except I'm fighting on horseback, so not useful. Um, so we're just going to take the coin from that, and yeah, I think we're going to wait to sell the Weirwood branch until we've got a little bit higher trade. Um, so we've got now two places we can go from here because the, the beyond the wall requires 150 renown and we currently have 60 so it takes a little bit to do um so we've got the tourney and nine stars and we've got the knights of the mind the knights of the mind is closest because it's down here in old town um if you guys don't know again if you don't know like the um game of thrones lore and things like that um old town has a place called the citadel which is a massive collection of like libraries and things like that for these people called maesters who are like the scholars of of the world and stuff like that and then the nine stars tourney is up here i believe nine stars yep there it is you've got the nine stars all the way up here in the veil um the veil is a very interesting location because as you can see it has one one way to get in by land otherwise you have to go through ports and stuff and so this is one that is like if we ever get into like the westlands or something like that and we have a fight with them it's going to be a very interesting and very long fight um so we're now going to head up to king's landing again hopefully not running into bandits along the way because we've just got our little oop um Band of looters there. Um, oh, Martin Snow, we can level him up. May as well do that. Um, skills. Okay. Him. We're just going to up upgrade his strength again, and we're going to put point into iron flesh, and then one-handed weapons. In fact, I'm actually going to see if we can pick up some Stormlands guys right now over here in Kellington. Don't know if it's possible. Oh, yep, recruit. We can get two levies. That's good enough for me. Um, and then we're going to head to Barrow Hall. With all this forest and stuff, it's really hard to see when bandits are coming at you. So you just got to hope. Oh, yep. Here we go. Looters. Um, Twelve of them. Ooh, this one could be interesting. We're going to fight it because we've got nine against their twelve, but and they're looters, so I don't know how bad they can be. Some, some of these guys you can run into have um, pre, some pretty decent gear because um, some of them can be like deserter type troops that you'll just have them and they'll be like man-at-arms and things like that. Um, nope, looks like these guys are really just basic looters so we're just gonna charge them. This, see like this little bit right here would be really useful for having some kind of archers because yeah they move over pretty slow and you can catch them horse is taking a decent amount of damage i took a decent amount of damage oop fena got a kill carver got a kill all this like range and stuff they have is kind of a pain for a horse. So I think I'm actually just gonna I'm gonna get off my horse and I'm just gonna go in and fight regularly. It's gonna end two ways. Come on guys. 
Yeah, we're doing pretty decent against these looters. A few people got knocked out, but I think those are more non-military, like militarily inclined. We got our Stormlander levies doing pretty decent. And we've got just these two left. One of them's gonna retreat. And there we go. Forget how to summon your horse. If I even can, I might go try and chase this guy down. Might not be able to, but we're gonna attempt it. So yeah, there's our like first victory against looters. As you can see, just especially for your like your character. If you don't have a lot of armor and stuff like that, you can take some pretty decent damage from these guys. Yeah, he's gonna get away. But yeah, there's our first little like battle and stuff, and done pretty well. And we only had Sathos and Maron, who aren't really military type. I mean, they're they're not really meant for fighting. Um, we're gonna just share with the men because, I mean, we don't really need all of it. I'm gonna take some stones. Some sling stones, actually. And the arrows. Yeah, we're just going to go with that. We're going to leave the rest for the guys. And we're going to head over to Barrel Hall. So yeah, there's our first little... Oh, some guy's ready to upgrade. Um, we're going to put him to longbows because we, we need that ranged experience. Like, that ranged... Not experience, but... um Variety. Um, Fena, we're just gonna put one more to your intelligence because I want to put two into your trade. She's gonna be a very military focus, but for right now, um, Maron's gonna be our big. Here one sec. Need to take a drink real quick. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, Maron's going to be our pretty trade-inclined kind of dude. Um, everyone's kind of got their own little plan. There was one more guy I actually need to go pick up that we forgot about who's going to be our healer. Um, he's going to be another military-inclined dude or fighting. Because as you can see, his strength and his agility are pretty high, and he's got points in Power Strike and Weapon Masters, so... He's going to be pretty high in our fighting type stuff. Um, so yeah, we're just going to continue moving along. We're going to go Barrow Hall real quick, pick up some more guys, and then four Stormly and Lovey Sweet. And then we're going to, before we get too far, we're going to head back to Weeping Town because I need to pick up one more companion. And we can stop at um, these two villages afterwards. Just going to speed it up, which is going to make it really framey for a little bit, but it does actually make it go faster as far as travel time goes. Oh, and then there's Essos having all of their wonderful diplomacy issues. Essos is good if you really want to go and just fight a ton because they have tons of diplo like diplomacy differences and issues and it goes back and forth all the time. Okay, we're looking for Brighton Storm. May have to go in and out a few times to find him. Oh, no, he's right here. Bright and Storm. He is going to be our um, healer because he was a maester for the Citadel and stuff like that. So, okay. Now we've got him. We're just going to go over to Prawn Bay. How many people can I? 37 people. Okay. We're going to go over to Prawn Bay, we're going to pick up some more people. Five more levies, that's good. And then we're going to go to Grandview and pick up a few more. Then we're going to head our way right up. Oh. <laughs> and more wonderful dialogue. Look, the wolf, I've seen this place before. Play with the skulls. <laughs> and, and this is Carver. Carver's a very deranged old man, and he's my favorite. <laughs> Wow, no one. Okay, now we're heading up to King's Landing. 
Carver is on it. I mean, he's just, he's an interesting companion. And the funny thing is, is if you know the Game of Thrones world really well, he fits in pretty good with the rest of the Game of Thrones world. And he's just a really funny companion to have. And all the Stormlands party is wandering around. Should we, mm, let's stop at Summer Hall real quick. Because they're right here. All these places, again, are just going to be... I mean, they may not be the most interesting, but they're useful for playing. Um, because it gives experience and things like that. Some of them are really interesting to go look at. I'm going to go show you one when we get back on the map that I'm going to probably stop at just because it's interesting. Um, and again, some of these places have hidden, hidden chests. Some of them don't. Um, some places have other interactions. Um, like, I don't know if this is an actual interaction or if they're just here. Nope, they're just here. Um, yeah, see, that got us on our level up, and hey, look, a pile of bones. There's, yep, random dead bodies, because why not? I believe, yep, here's another one. No hidden chests in there. Some of these hidden chests are really good. Like the one that we're going to King's Landing for is probably one of the most useful hidden chests that you'll find. Um, I'll show you when we get there because I know exactly where that chest happens to be. Um, don't know how much more there's going to be to explore here. Kind of just keeping an eye out for random chests or other places that might be of interest. That tower there is probably something, but we'll look at that in a sec. Yeah, this is probably something, so we're just gonna go take a look at this and probably leave. Oh, there's a person here. Oh, it's a Targaryen. Fun. Targaryens were kind of like the rulers of the Seven Kingdoms for a while. Why is my horse just like... Okay, you do you, horse. Um, I think that's about all we're going to find here for now. So I'm just going to continue on to King's Landing. Um, so the one place I really want to go look at is Castamere. When we get over to this side, we're going to go look at Castamere because if you guys don't know the whole story behind Castamere, it's pretty interesting um the ruler of the westerlands the um why am i failing on this name right now i know this name like i i know it but i'm failing on it right now lannisters that's what it is <laughs> the lannisters they are the like lords of the westerlands and they're not exactly the nicest of people but hey <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so it's a huge like story as to their like start. Oh, I forget you have to go all the way around. Yep, uh, bandits. Why? Why are you? Oh wait, no. Are you? Are you fighting with me or are you fighting with somebody else? Nope. We're gonna go kill the bandits. No. Rotate the map. Because they're fighting farmers and farmers. If we enter on the side of the farmers, then we get renown and honor and stuff and all that good stuff so we're going to do this battle i think and then we're probably going to end it and save the special little secret for next time so let's go see if we can find them and then probably wait for our troops because Oh, yep, they're over here, so we're going to wait here for a second, kind of give our troops a second to catch up. Now, this is where a bow would be nice, because I could just sit here and shoot these guys. And look at our nice little horde of armed villagers and random other people.
riding on horseback on a hill is kind of a interesting thing, but... And we got a kill. Just gotta kill this last dude. And he's down. Nice. Nice little battle to finish off the episode. Are we just gonna stand around and cheer for themselves? Alan. Of course Alan gets wounded. I need to get better gear for these people. Okay. Oh, sweet. Oh, I can't. I need a skill for it. Well, I guess we're gonna level up here in a sec. And we're gonna share and take the sword. And, well, this is where we're going to end it. So, guys, this was a Clash of Kings mod for Mount Blade Warband 2, and this is my return. So, I will see you all later.